What up, Reader Fam? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you a book tag and I'm super excited about it. Today's video is going to be a bit more chill. I'm feeling pretty calm today, but I still wanted to make a video. I'm just not gonna be my normal chaotic energy vibes today, which I hope you're okay with that, but if you're not into like the calm vibes, maybe wait for my next video. Today I'm gonna be doing a book slash bookshelf tag that I came up with called the Bookshelf Time Capsule Tag. Now this is probably going to be somewhat similar to other bookshelf tags that you've seen around BookTube, but I just kind of wanted to make a tag that kind of worked as a time capsule for my bookshelf so that way I can look back on this video and kind of see what my bookshelves looked like at this time in my life. I am going to link to some other bookshelf tags that have been created down below in the description, so definitely go and check them out. Before I get into it, I just wanted to mention the fact that I recognize my privilege in having all of these books and having the collection that I do. I do not think that you have to have a big collection of books to be a valid reader or to be a bookish creator. You can literally just constantly get books from the library to be considered a book lover. You don't have to have a big collection like I do. I consider myself a book collector, which I do think is different from being a book lover or a bookish creator. So I just wanted to clarify that and put that on the table. But without further ado, let's not waste any time. Let's get started talking about my bookshelves, my bays, my babes, my beauties. Number one, give us an overview of your shelves and tell us where they are from. These are my beautiful bookshelves. They are the Billy Ikea bookshelves, aka the bookshelves that pretty much every booktuber ever has. What can I I say I'm basic. I have them in black as you can see. This whole wall has four bookshelves on it and then I have another section in my room where I have my desk in between two little skinny itty bitty shelves. I am completely changing up my bookshelves in the new year actually so these dudes are going away. I've had these bookshelves for like five maybe six years now and while I've enjoyed them and they've done a great job of holding on to my books after getting these bookshelves I kind of grew tired of how dark they make my atmosphere where I'm living and so since I moving places, I'm going to be changing bookshelves, and honestly, I'm getting the same bookshelves just in a different color, which you will see in 2021 once I set it up. And I know that that sounds ridiculous, like why would you get the same bookshelves in a different color? Well, the reason is they're great bookshelves, I just want a different color. I was originally actually going to try and just paint these bookshelves, but after doing research and looking more into it, I decided that A, it would be much easier just to buy new bookshelves, and B, I'm pretty sure it was just cheaper for me to buy new bookshelves. So I am going to be selling these not like on the internet or anything. I'm just going to be selling them locally and I'm really looking forward to some change in terms of my bookshelves. Obviously I know that people are probably going to make fun of me for getting these same shelves just in a different color. But listen, if it makes me happy, if it improves my environment and makes me feel less depressed because of how dark it is in my room, I'll take it. I've just realized over time that like my atmosphere affects the way that I'm feeling, which duh should be a no brainer, but it took me, you know, a little while to figure that out. So I'm excited for my environment to improve with some new shelves. Next up, which shelf on your bookshelf is your favorite? I am obsessed with my Victoria Schwab shelf over here. It's just what I want every shelf on my bookshelf to look like, even though it's currently kind of a bit of a chaotic mess because Victoria Schwab keeps popping out books and so I'm having a hard time fitting them all in one section. I just love the way that this shelf looks. I love having all the little fandom -y trinkets all over it. And even though it is a little bit messy, I kind of like how chaotic it looks. And I think it overall is just a great representation of my love for Victoria Schwab books. Like the fact that I have a designated section for her books with all these little fan things around it is a great way of showing how much I love her books. Have I read all of her books? No, that's another story. But you know, someday I'll read them all and I will love them all. I just want to like savor them, you know? I don't want them to go too fast because once I've read them all, I can't read them for the first time again. And that always holds me back from reading so many books. I need to work on that. I need to work on that really badly. It's embarrassing how many books it's held me back from reading because I'm like, if I read that, I won't be able to read it again for the first time. Why am I like this? I need help. But tell me, are any of you guys like that? I'm sure some of you all are. I can't be the only one. Next up, do you keep every book you read or do you ditch the ones that you don't end up loving? I definitely used to be somebody that had to keep every book ever. I'm somebody who is incredibly nostalgic and sentimental and I like to keep things that I have like a memory associated with. So I used to keep books just for reasons like, oh, I bought that at a bookstore on a trip and I had the best coffee in that bookstore and I don't ever want to forget that coffee in the book so I'm gonna keep this book and it's like why are you doing that? What's the point? Clearly you still remember the copy after you've gotten rid of that book so you're good bruh. So that was something that I kind of had to work on. I just realized over the years that I would rather have a collection of books that I love rather than a mixed bag of books that I don't love and books that I do love. Obviously to each their own if you're somebody who enjoys keeping every book ever like I totally understand that like I just said. I get it. <laughs> Especially if you're nostalgic or sentimental or even if you're like I put in all this work to 
read that book, of course I'm gonna keep it. I get that too. I will say that currently I have a bit of a mixed bag in terms of books that I've read and books that I haven't read, which I don't really love that. I would rather have a collection of books that I have read and then just like have new books coming in and reading those books as soon as they come in, but I'm not at that point yet. Uh, that's something that I really need to work on too. It's also been really hard lately because there's been lots of book sales left and right and I just can't help myself. I cannot resist a book sale. Who doesn't love a cheap book? Next up, what do you do when your bookshelves fill up? That is currently something that I am experiencing right now. Like these bookshelves are full. Mind you, I do need to go through them and get rid of some books that I've either lost interest in or books that I've read and didn't love. I need to get rid of those books and stop being a book hoarder. But I really make sure that my bookshelves are full up. Like I've used every space that I possibly can. Like I have the tops of my bookshelves lined with books. So I really make sure that I am using up every possible space that I can. But as far as what I do once I hit this point is book stacking. I stack books next to the bookshelf. I stack books on my dresser. I stack books on my nightstand. And finally, I have a really nice kind of shelf bed frame, which it's not supposed to be a bookshelf bed frame necessarily, but... I use it for books. No surprise there. Next up, do you have an organization method or is there an organization method that you've been wanting to try? I know that this kind of drives people bonkers, but I do not have an organization method at all. Like I really just kind of go off of what I feel, what looks best for me. Like I'll be organizing it and be like, okay, this color looks good with this color. This spine looks good next to this spine. This spine font looks great next to this spine font. So really I just kind of go with what feels aesthetic to me. I will say that I guess the one somewhat organization method that I go by is height. I definitely try to keep each book on each bookshelf the same height. It does not always work that way though, but I mostly like to keep them all the same height. It's just so satisfying. I can't help it. As for organization methods that I've been wanting to try, I have actually been wanting to try the method where you just kind of like mix all the different sizes, where you have just all different sizes next to each other, where you have like a paperback, a hardback, another paperback, another hardback, a tall hardback, a small hardback. I've seen people make it work and make it look really cool. I don't know if I'd be able to do it, but I do want to try it at some point and just see how I feel about it. I feel like it will make me panic and be like, no, this ain't right, but I want to try. I want to see how it goes. Let me know down below in the comments if you guys use an organization method at all. How often do you reorganize your shelves and how do you approach it? I hardly ever reorganize them. I do shift them around quite often, like once a new book comes in, I have to do some shifting to kind of see where I want a specific book to go. But for me personally, I do not find joy in reorganizing my bookshelves at all. I hate the process. Says, it's the worst. It's so hard and it takes so long, at least for me, especially because I don't have an organization method. I'm just like, oh, these books vibe together. This works out. Like if I had an organization method, it probably would be better. Like if I organized by author or genre, it probably goes so smooth, but it doesn't at all. That's why I hardly ever reorganize my bookshelves. They almost always look like this. As for how I approach reorganizing them, I just take off every book ever and kind of put them in stacks as to where I think I might want them. And what I do is I end up picking one designated shelf that's like completely cleared off and I will use that shelf as like the puzzle base and then I will start to put the puzzle pieces together and try to put together the books that I feel like should go together. And once I put that puzzle together, I will move that puzzle to another shelf and start the process completely over. It takes forever, but it's worth it, except it's not, not at all. Next up, is there a shelf on your bookshelf that bothers you no matter what? Like no matter how much fixing up you do, you still don't like it? Why yes, yes I do, I have two spots. So for First up, I have like my Brandon Sanderson section. There's other books by other authors on there, but I kind of call it my Sanderson shelf just because most of his books dominate that shelf. It really bothers me for a stupid reason, but I'm just gonna expose myself. So why don't I? Let's just do some exposing here. I have most of his books in the UK editions. And the thing that bothers me the most is that some of his books in the UK edition are different sizes. Why? Why did they do this? They did this to annoy me, didn't they? They did, they did, they did, they did. They were like, you know what? Let's annoy these readers and just make his books different sizes. And overall, that shelf just kind of annoys me because of how many different sizes there are, which I know is so stupid. Such a stupid reason to like be bothered by a shelf, but it bothers me. It bothers me. Then I have another shelf that's at the bottom of my bookshelf out of frame so you can't see it in videos. And it just has a bunch of odd sized books on it. And I can just never quite get an order right on it. Like it just always bothers me no matter what. One of these days I will crack the code and I will nail it. But today is not one of those days. Next up, which book color dominates your shelves? The first one is white. And that's mostly because of my manga section. Like I have a lot of manga that are white. And then there are quite a few white books that are just sprinkled throughout my bookshelf. Another color is blue. I am drawn 
to blue books. There's just something about the color blue that I love and I just can't help myself. I'm always picking up all the blue books. What's the most damaged book on your shelf and give us a story time as to how it got that way. I genuinely have lucked out because I do not have many books that have that much damage on them and even the one that I'm going to show you has like zero damage other than one little spot and that's why we broke up. On the spine it just has this little tear on it which really is not that big of a deal except for the fact that it bothers me so much every time I see it I'm just like <sighs> you were so close to perfect but you got a little rip and the way it got that way was just through the shipping process and I could have sent it back but like I'm lazy I don't got time for that and honestly I could just like get rid of the dust jacket and just go with the book itself because it is a beautiful hardback instead I like to stay irritated and leave the dust jacket on so I can see it all the time and be like Ugh. next up do you have any books on your shelves that have major printing errors I do have one but I can't find it anywhere on my bookshelf so I've misplaced it or something but there's one book that I have where the acknowledge like printed upside down which I don't even know how that happened but I was very confused once I hit that point in the book I was like oh it's upside down not that I ever read the acknowledgments anyway so it didn't really matter <laughs> next up what's the ugliest spine on your bookshelf that sticks out like a sore thumb I feel like y'all already know my answer for this one it's Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Mass all the other spines are super dark like all of them pretty much look like this and then they came out with this why did they do this this was unnecessary it's been like what two or three years and it still bothers me I did actually used to have a book spine that was much worse than that and that was grasshopper jungle it was like a neon green i've since gotten rid of that book but it stuck out so much it was bothersome <laughs> next up if you don't already have your dream bookshelves what do your dream bookshelves look like i've really been loving kind of like the hanging bookshelves look for example my friend monica whom you all should follow has these like hanging bookshelves and i'm obsessed with them and i think once i like fill up my new bookshelves that i get in my new place i'm gonna set up some of these hanging bookshelves in my living room because I just really love the look of them. So that's currently what my dream library looks like. As long as it makes me happy, that's all that matters. I don't need anything like too fancy. Like I literally just want to be able to see all my book babies. Next up, what's the tallest book on your bookshelf? This, I believe, is the tallest book on my bookshelf and it's the Monocle Book of Japan. And it just has lots of information on Japan in it and I love it. It's so informative and I also just love looking at it and fantasizing about being in Japan because I love Japan. If you didn't know that about me, I love Japan. Next up, what's the smallest book? on your bookshelf. I think it's this one right here. It's a Penguin's Classics Edition and it's called A Cup of Sake Beneath the Cherry Trees. And I'm pretty sure it's just like a little novella, but I haven't read it yet. Oops! No surprise there though. Typical of me. Next up, what book is your most prized possession? This one is really hard and I don't even think I have the right answer, but I'm just gonna say this one right now and that is these two editions of Blood Witch. And just because there's kind of a funny story surrounding as to why I have two of these. So basically I went to a Susan Dinner book signing and I had already bought a copy of Blood Witch so I was just gonna get this one signed but then they were giving away a really cool art print if you bought a copy there so I was like dang it I'm gonna buy another copy so I bought a second copy and when I got up there for her to sign a book I was like okay I'll just have her personalize one of the books and then I'll have her just sign her signature on the other one so I can give it away to somebody so she personalized this one and then she began to accidentally personalize this one and she was like oh crap what have I done and I was like you know what I know how you can fix it just draw a beautiful picture and so she drew a beautiful picture she drew a sea fox in the book or what's supposed to be a sea fox and then wrote a fantastic note inside of it It says for fans of sea foxes because this is so clearly a sea fox cool This went so well sleep deprived Susan dinner the best version of me clearly She was very sleep deprived on this tour spot But it made for a really funny moment and I will cherish this book forever <laughs> Lastly, what's a book that makes you slip back in time to a past memory once you see it on your bookshelf for me It's this Japanese version of volume one of my hero academia because I bought this when I was in Japan and I can so clearly see everything that went down on the day of buying this book and so that's why I love having this book on my bookshelf. Can I read the Japanese? No. Someday I hope to but I just really love having this and like being able to like just go back in time every time I see it and one day I will return back to Japan and it'll be amazing. I'm super excited for that day but for now I'll just do some time slipping every time I hold this book. <laughs> Alright guys that's it for the bookshelf time capsule tag. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know down below in the comments a book in your collection that makes you kind of slip back in time to a moment in your life and what that moment is if you're willing to share. If you like this video be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye oh.